Hello, my name is Yuri Desiro, and I'm a PhD candidate in industrial engineering. Today, I will be discussing scope. It's important to define scope. A defined project is critical to the success of the project. Without a clearly defined scope, the expected work tends to increase, there will always be something else to do, and expected milestones might not ever be reached. Without agreeing on the project scope with the sponsor, you can never be sure as to whether or not you're working toward that final goal. A clear scope clearly defines your path of work, ensuring that every accomplishment moves you that much closer to a successful implementation. It also helps if you establish responsibilities for each team member and outlines how and when work will be approved by the sponsor. You and your teammates are the project leaders. You define what will be done, when it will be done, and how it will be done. This freedom comes with great responsibility though. If you choose a complicated method, you may never accomplish it. If you choose something too simple, you might have a boring, unimpressive project. In either case, the hours you spend on your senior design project will be the best and tedious, but possibly worse if you do not do the correct job. To define the scope, you must identify your sponsor's needs, a clearly defined problem. Why, why was the project chosen? What is the sponsor looking for? Understanding what the what and why of the project allows you to set the specific targeted objectives and each objectives should be clear. Is the process out of date? Is information not going to the people who need it? Has the desired outcome or process changed? The project should address each aspect of the current problem for all perspectives. To answer these questions, you should interview the customers of the process, the customers of the project, to define the needs of each group. Accept what your sponsor says as they need. Then brainstorm to figure out what you can do to meet those needs. Also brainstorm what possible meetings those needs could have. In addition, use your knowledge of the process to determine if there is any underlying issues the uh, sponsor may not be aware of yet. For example, they might say that they need you to create a new process from scratch, but you may be able to use many of the components already in the existing process. Or they may say that you need to discover a new method of doing a task, when really the issue is that the current method isn't really being properly maintained. After defining the needs, uh, identify objectives that need to meet those needs. Create a list of what must be done to minimally satisfy the needs of the sponsor. What can solve the sponsor's problems? What can you do to reach that solution? Good guiding, a good guiding network is used to make your goals smart, which means specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Improve the process is not a specific goal. Instead, define what improvement is being sought after. For example, your sponsor may be looking for a process with a lower mean. It is even better to specify the numbers in your goal, like develop methods to lower the process mean by five grams, or whatever number in units makes sense for your project. Describe why each goal is important and how each will be achieved. So your goals must be measurable. That is that you must be able to say if you've completed your project successfully. Your scope may include goals about creating specific workflow diagrams, control charts, or other useful tools. For example, become fluent in French is not measurable. Completing 300 hours of French practice is measurable. A goal is achievable if its completion is solely under your and your project sponsor's control. If you are working with a manager at a single location of a company, a goal of making a company-wide policy change might not be achievable, but creating documentation describing the changes with proof on how beneficial the changes would be and providing documentation to how your project could be implemented is achievable. It can be difficult to know if your goal is realistic at the start of your project though, but you should, be at, least, uh, consider, you should at least consider what would be necessary to complete the goal when deciding if it should be part of the project's scope. Some goals may be good ideas, but you're, if you're uncertain if they're realistic or achievable, that's okay. Include the goals in your scope with a note that its inclusion is tentative on the future progress. For each goal, specify a realistic timeline. If you have all the information to complete a goal in October, plan for it to be completed in October. If you need more information before another goal can be completed, plan to request that information or research as soon as possible. Follow up every week until you have the information then complete your goal. Identify constraints in the project. 
There are some hurdles that you must get past in any project, whether it's somebody's delay in responding to your emails, or if there's some necessary information that no one seems to know. Being aware of possible constraints in your project lets you plan in steps to get around the limitations and complete the project on time. Possible constraints could include lack of resources, outdated or slow computer systems, or environmental conditions. When planning your goals, think about what could impede your project progress. Speak with your, or your sponsor to figure out what limitations can be overcome and what may limit the outcomes of your project. Allow budget, or allowable budget is a key constraint of any project. If your project is exploratory, focusing on developing a new progress or process, you may be tempted to say there is a zero dollar budget for your project. You should never state that there is a zero dollar budget. Even if it is an exploratory phase, it is, expired, or it is expected that you should require some sort of funding. And you may not, or you may need to know your budget uh, for your sponsor. You may need to know the budget your sponsor has in mind for implementing uh, your project. Acceptable costs should be linked to expected savings. For example, a five million dollar solution is acceptable if it ends up saving the company ten million dollars a year. It would be totally unreasonable if it ends up saving the company only two thousand dollars. Yeah, if they say cost is no problem, ask them a, ask them this theoretical, if the $5 million solution would be acceptable versus the $2,000. No matter the project, there will always be an upper limit to the possible cost. For the budget section in your report, discuss with the teaching assistants what would be appropriate. Some, pro some of the projects, such as those resulting in a physical prototype, the budget can be easily created, as it mostly consists of expenditure on parts. For other projects, the cost of the potential solutions may be harder to determine. Rearrangement of an existing manufacturing plant requires the plan to or requires the plan to be out of service for some extent of time. This downtime could be factored into the budget. Training employee has downtime costs since the employees cannot be working while they are attending training, as well as any software or trainer related costs. Before finalizing the scope of your project, Define out-of-scope aspects. Clearly define where your product ends. You do not have the time to make a perfect solution, and no one is expected to. But make sure you're only working on the things that address your customer's needs, aka the things in the scope. Make sure you meet the minimum uh, before de devoting resources to nice but unnecessary components, aspects, or goals. While defining your scope, you should also state the assumptions you're making. You can make assumptions when the effort to discover a piece of information is more than the information is worth. You could be assuming something about the end user of the product, or assuming something about the process. Keep a list of the assumptions you make throughout the process, and be aware of how each assumption could affect your proposed solution. You will need to validate some of those er, assumptions later on in the project. For these assumptions, have a plan how and when they will need to be validated. Define a strategy to figure out how you can achieve all your objectives. Sure, your end goal may be to produce a working prototype, but you can't start building right away. You will need the materials and design first, so make a list of steps that you need to accomplish in order to reach that minimum. Determine the necessary design components, identify ideal parts, purchase necessary parts, test the components, build and test the subsystems, and then finally build the prototype. If you're recording data, make sure you have some sort of solid idea as to what type of data you expect to see and how you expect to analyze it so you can record all the information if you need to. If you spend two months getting data only to realize that you didn't mark down a critical factor like who was performing the actions you were monitoring, you must start over and then suddenly you're two months behind. Consider creating a work breakdown structure or WBS to help illustrate the steps you need to reach each objective. While it's best to stick to your project scope, you may need to change your scope at some point during the project. You may have an idea of a solution in mind when first designing your scope, but after, after measuring the current process, you realize that it doesn't really solve the problem. Some goals you may rely on getting information from other people by a certain time, which doesn't always happen. 
You may need to add to the project scope based on the information you learned during the few phases of the project. So while defining your initial objective, detail how changes to the scope may be made. How often you will revise your project scope? Too often you will spend too much time planning than working. Too infrequently and you'll realize you've done a lot of work that won't help you meet your goals. You, how will you be involved in finding the project scope and to what extent? The team, the course staff, and the project sponsor must all be involved in scope changes, but to different extents depending on the expectation your project sponsor has. For every scope project change, or for every scope change, ensure the project will be able to meet the customer and sponsor's needs. Before submitting your first report, go over the proposed scope with your project sponsor if you did not create it with them, or if you added it to added to it before you the initial or before getting their initial needs list. With very de, a very defined scope, it is easy to see if you are on the same page as your sponsor or help ensure you meet your sponsor's goals. Clearly defining the project scope gives you a structure to work with for the duration of the project and a clear end goal to work towards. Having specific goals to reach toward increasing. Having specific goals to re work towards increases your team's focus and productivity. Having a clear scope approaches, or having a clear scope improve, having a clear scope approved by your project stakeholders protects you from arbitrarily changing or arbitrary changes down the line. You can be more productive by tackling issues that are directly related to the scope, rather than tangibly, or than, or you can be more productive by tackling issues that are directly related to the scope. By working towards the end goal, you will know how much you need to put into the project uh, and be able to schedule your time better. So to recap, there are four key points you must remember. First, identify your sponsor's needs. Two, define measurable and realistic objectives. Three, identify constraints and what is out of scope. And four, define the strategy.